The internet since its creation has broken boundaries, connected people around the world, empowered businesses, and availed information at the fingertips of the citizenry. Now in its 30th year, the founder of the phenomenon, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, believes that as the web reshapes our lives, we have a responsibility to make sure it is recognized as a human right. It's about growth, it's about innovation, it's got more, you have lots and lots of people, and, and you've got more and more people coming online, more and more people starting cool companies, more and more starting people starting to innovate on the internet. Figures recently released by the International Communication Union shows that 51.2% of the world's population are now online. But what should be done to get others online? The web was always meant to be for everyone, and this is our chance to redouble efforts to make sure that we secure that goal. We have to start encouraging and almost um, making technology an attractive option for women. The 30-hour trip was ended at 2 p.m. Nigerian time with this colorful display of drummers. Africa's population has seen the strongest rise of people online from 2.1% in 2005 to 24% by the end of 2018. The hope will be that the good the web offers will be fully utilized by this number. Victor Mathias, Channel Television News. Joining us via Skype to discuss the importance of the World Wide Web is an IT expert and managing partner through identity company, Mr. Taiwo Oyewo. Welcome to News Across Nigeria. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Our pleasure. It is so pedestrian, but yet so important. What's the importance of the World Wide Web to Nigeria's development? Uh, it, it can't be understated. I mean, the Internet has changed the way the world re relates to one another, the way we communicate, the way we interact with one another. So uh, Nigeria can't be left behind. Um, and it's so crucial. I mean, these days you see everybody burying their heads in their phones. It's just because of the Internet that has enabled that. Um, the Internet has enabled businesses to work um, a whole lot uh, more efficiently. I mean, with a common trend, a new phenomenon these days where you have a lot of uh, people leaving the shores of the country, um, from software developers to nurses to doctors to uh, people in different kinds of fields, and so a lot of people working remotely as well. The Internet has done that. And it's um, enabled a lot, of people, a, lot of, a lot of people to earn a lot more income, um, to earn better, to be able to standardize the way we operate. Uh, you know, it's just every facet of our lives, you know, to agriculture, to health, from to healthcare, education, um, with things like Coursera, um, to um, even in areas of innovation, uh, where people can take virtual programs and then get accredited as well. Even to new broadcasting, right now we're using technology which is enabled by the World Wide Web to be able to communicate and speak um, to one another. So it's, um, it can't be overstated. It's just affected every area of our lives, and Nigeria cannot afford to be left behind. That's just the, the reality. And we do have population on our side as far as the uh, numbers are concerned. But do you think that we're taking enough advantage of it, informed advantage of the Internet at this point uh, in every facet of life? And how can we do that? No, no, I, I don't think so. I, I'm, uh, uh, we, yes, we have population on our side. Um, quite frankly, I'm not sure what our population is. Um, there is the 180, there's the 190, there's the 200 million. But that said, um, you know, the prevalence of the, the, of the Internet being, it, the Internet is best utilized in certain cosmopolitan areas of the country, um, Lagos particularly, then Abuja, you have um, spots, uh, spotted areas in, I mean, you know, your state like Ibadan, um, some parts of maybe Abelkuta, and then Port Harcourt, essentially. Uh, you know, there's a larger part, I mean, some parts of the east as well, you have a lot of, um, you have some part, you have internet there, but it's not something that is widespread in, in every home. It's not widespread in every office. Um, you still have people that say, oh, um, if you want to communicate with some other people in other parts of the country, at times you still have people that still believe in the physical meet. Oh, I'll come meet you, or they say send something physical. Um, so I think one of the things that we need to do, which is something that I think was a mistake we made earlier on, which is to say that at the time when GSM was licensed, we should have had a roadmap to have the, the entire country networked, um, create a backbone, and then create a last, um, a last uh, mile connectivity as well, or fiber to home, or connect each home or each office um, to the Internet. I think we would have had a giant strides right now. The rising cost of data is not going to allow 
a lot of people still stay there. I mean, so a lot of people are still excluded um, from the Internet, even though the, we have a high um, adoption of mobile phones and the mm -hmm. smartphones are also growing. But one thing we need to do very quickly um, is to really, really find a way to ensure that we connect as many people as possible um, to the Internet by creating the right infrastructure. And I'm not just talking just so that you can do social media or do WhatsApp or do um, any of those things there, but to do proper things, to do work, to do video streaming, to do um, audio streaming, you know, like we're doing right now, broadcast services as well. Um, you know, for emergency services, to be able to do um, e-health, I mean, perform surgeries or train doctors using, um, you know, some, what to call it, telemedicine, um, as it were, and so many other opportunities out there. If the infrastructure is what we need to get right, and if we can get that right, I think people will find uses for the Internet themselves. Yeah, exactly. We'll have to leave it there. It's very important, those points that you've made. Thank you so much for your time. Mr. David Oyewo, Taiwo Oyewo, I beg your pardon. Taiwo Oyewo, yes, yes. thank you very ITX. much.